Well, hello, it's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. And today I wanted to make a little journal that I'm gonna be using to document my December. And it's about seven inches tall by three and a half inches wide. And it is made from envelopes. And I was inspired to make this type of journal from I'm a Cool Mom. Uh, she had made one a while ago and I thought it was a great idea because I had found a stack of these envelopes at a thrift store that I got. I mean, a big stack. And so I thought this would be a perfect way to use some of them up uh, in a journal as well. So it is fabric covered. So there's a fabric um, that wraps around and we have a nice um, book plate here with some information about that it's going to be for this year and when you open it up you can see that the envelopes are each page so each page has a envelope a pocket here or it has a tuck spot so you could add tags or something that might have some frillies coming off the top to the tuck spot pages and then there is pockets for you to add notes or lists or journal cards um, or pictures that you would like to keep in here to remember you know this month of the um, of the year and I also tried to include pages where I could journal right on top of the page since I don't have any just plain pages in here I wanted to have a couple of places that were lighter that I might be able to jot some notes and things down if I wanted to but you could certainly collage on these or just add some fun stamps or any Anything to these as well. So let's go ahead and get started making this journal. And before I do that, I just wanted to mention the pages and things that I'm going to be using inside the journal are from my Christmas Bounty digital kit. So that's what I'll be using throughout to um, make this journal. So most of the journal pages is what you see in here. Um, and then I am also going to be using some of the ephemera pages, um, but mostly the ephemera pages I'll probably be using as I document my December. So we won't be doing a whole lot with the ephemera pages, but all of the journal pages come from this kit. And then also I have a freebie to go along with the kit. So I added some... Um, digitals on this freebie that are in the shape of ovals and circles and diamonds that you could use to make gift tags for your gifts or you could use them to make ornaments. Michelle from Tape and Twine has a wonderful video on using these digitals to create clay ornaments where she actually transfers the image onto the clay. And it's for beginners and I think it would be a wonderful craft for you to do with friends and family if you are at home and can't get out like you normally could, this would be a fun way to um, remember December. So I will link to her video down below and I will link to the freebie and also to my Christmas Bounty Digital Kit if you're interested in t checking that out. Thanks for much, so much for watching and let's go ahead and get started to make this journal. Okay, let's talk about supplies. So obviously to make an envelope journal we're going to need some envelopes and I got a giant stack of these envelopes at a thrift store for you know like a dollar or something like that so I thought these would be perfect to use um, for me to start using them up now they do have a double window on here but I'm probably going to be covering up most of those because I'm not real crazy about these windows um, and also I'm going to be doing sort of a you know green Christmas theme and the blue's not going to fit in there so well. So I'll probably be covering up most of those windows, but I can definitely still use these. Now I'm going to be using about 15 of these envelopes because I want enough to do, you know, like a, a through December journal. Now I am not always good at journaling, so I don't believe that I will do one page a day. So if I do 15 envelopes, that'll give me 30 pages and, um, but I may not even do that many. So um, I'm going to have lots of the tuck spots in there, lots of pockets, you know, to put notes and pictures and things like that. And that's kind of all that I'm, you know, hoping for here. So that's why I'm going to use 15 envelopes. And I'm going to be cutting these down. 
So the journal is smaller than these envelopes, but this is what I have. I'm going to use what I have. So um, whatever envelopes you choose, if they're bigger than you want, you can definitely cut them down. If they're smaller than you want, then you may want to try different envelopes. <laughs> okay, so we're also going to need um, a ruler to be able to measure um, our envelopes and sizes and things. Um, I always like to have one of these close by when I'm doing projects just in case I need to measure something. You're also going to need your cutter. Make sure you have your cutter. Um, you could certainly use scissors if you want to. Um, the cutter is real easy for me. Um, okay, so we're also going to need some lightweight, lightweight cardboard. This is just some packaging. So I'm probably going to try to use something like this. This is um, for the front and back cover just to make it a little bit sturdy. So it can be, it doesn't have to be chipboard. It can be, obviously this is pretty flexible and that's okay because um, our envelopes are gonna give us a lot of weight already. We're just gonna use this to make the front and back covers a little bit more sturdy. So you'll need um, two pieces of this and it, they'll need to be the size of your covers. So whatever you end up, you know, your cover sizes being, that's what you'll need. And mine, I'm probably going to need two pieces at about three and a half by seven, I think is what I want my journal to be. So that's the size, you know, I'll cut two of those that size um, on this. Then we're also going to need some glue. So I'm going to be using my Beacon 3-in-1 glue and probably also a lot of glue stick because this is what I'm going to use to actually cover the pages up. A pencil. Um, we're going to be marking our papers to cut them down in some cases when we don't measure them. Um, I like to, you know, have a pencil nearby so that we can mark our cuts there. Um, I'm also going to be using a corner rounder, so I am going to be rounding probably some big rounds on some of the papers that we put in to match um, what ends up happening with our envelopes. So when we cut some of these envelopes down, you can maybe see, let me see if I can, I don't know if this will help. So I'm going to just try to show you on this corner, you can see how my envelope has a rounded corner here. So when we cut some of this off, sometimes you're gonna see this rounded um, piece here. And when I cover this side, I would like to match that round there um, so that you know it looks cohesive. So uh, a corner rounder we'll be using for that. And then also I'm gonna be doing some distressing. I'm gonna be using my frayed burlap um, for distressing. It's a little bit, um, I don't know, there's a little bit more gray in it as compared to like the vintage photo, which is definitely a brown. This also I feel like has a little bit of um, a greenish tint to it. And since the pages I'm gonna be using for covering have a lot of um, green in them, I want to use that throughout just to um, keep that vintage style going. This is really, I mean, there's some white in here too. So I could, you could definitely leave your envelopes white if you want to, I just don't want to. So um, you can see that there is some white, but I do want to cover the edges and things with my distress ink so that we can take some of that white off of there. Um, and then we're also going to need fabric. So I'm gonna cover the front and back of my journal with some fabric and then probably add some additional items onto the front. So if you have any Christmas fabric or something that would um, generally match whatever papers you're using, you know, that's what you wanna pull out here. And then I'm gonna be using digital papers to do all of my coverings. So I've printed out just the journal pages from my Christmas bounty kit. So I'm going to be using these to cover the, the pages throughout. So these are just one-sided prints because I'm going to be gluing them down, cutting and gluing them down. And I did also print um, like some of the more ornate pages as well as some of the plainer pages. So like I have one of, you know, this page has a lot going on. If I wanted to journal on top of this, it would kind of be tough to do that. But on this one, because it's kind of a background page, you could actually write on top of that. So I'm going to be covering, you know, with um, both different types of papers. So you can just do plainer papers if you want, or you can do plainer and a, um, some more, a mix of, you know, more decorative pages. So since I'm not going to be using a lot of just plain coffee dyed papers, which I may, I may do one or two of those pieces. Um, you know, I might 
pull in some of these to do some of my coverings so I can write on them. I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of them, if at all. I haven't totally decided if I'm going to even use something like this. I'm probably going to need to run, go through my stash and see if I have something a little lighter um, because I do kind of want it to match. So, But I, I think I might get away with just using these sort of background papers so that I'll have enough place to write things down if I want to do that. I may not even be doing that because since this is going to have so many pockets and tuck spots, I can always create, you know, a tag or a note card or something like that to tuck in there where I could be writing on the back of it. So um, I don't think I'll need a lot of pages to write on per se in here, but I'll have plenty with what I have here. Okay, and I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else that we need right at the moment. So let's go ahead and get going and get started on this. All right, step number one is to get your envelopes together and to decide how big you want your journal to be. So I want the width of my journal to be the full width of the envelope. So I know that it's going to be right around three and a half inches, a little bit more than three and a half inches. So one, two, three, four, about three and five eighths is going to be the width of my journal. And now the height. And I could certainly do a journal that is completely as tall as this envelope, but I don't want to. <laughs> I think it would look um, cuter and it would be easier for me to work a little bit smaller if I cut it down a little bit. So you could certainly go, you know, as small as you want here. I was thinking seven might be a fun um, size because it's just enough to kind of look like a small pamphlet or book. All right, so I'm going to cut it down at seven, and then we can take a look at it even from there and decide, you know, if that's really what um, I want to do. So I'm just going to, actually, I don't want to cut off the uh, window pages, at least on this one. Um, so I'm just going to do this at seven inches. And like I said, we can always cut it down more if we want to, but let's take a look at that. And I think... That's the, the windows are a little distracting. And I think that this size is fun. I could even go down, you know, one more inch to make it like a four by, or I'm sorry, a three and th three and five eighths by six inches tall. But I like the look of the seven. So I think I'm going to keep it at the seven. Um, so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down all of my envelopes to this size. And the piece that comes off, I'm going to keep. So make sure you don't throw those away because we'll probably be using them for part of um, the journal. So I did wanna mention, if you are using envelopes that you're cutting down, you'll notice that you know it becomes kind of an open envelope. And I'm good with that because this will become a tuck spot for me and I like that idea. So um, we'll have some tuck spots and we'll be using this piece to create um, you know, an envelope kind of back in there as well. Um, so make sure you hang on to those. Don't just throw them away. So let's go ahead and cut all of these down so we have the same size envelopes throughout. All right, I have my 15 envelopes all cut down and um, I did cut them down all the same way. Um, and the way I'm going to sort of reassemble some of these, um, that makes it easier for them to come back together as an envelope. So when we get to that part, I'll show you a little bit more about what I mean. But now, before I do anything else, before we start putting it together, I'm going to do my distressing around the edges. Now, most of the insides of the envelopes are going to be covered, and you don't need to worry about the flap because the flap will be hidden as part of our binding. So that's, you won't need to worry about doing any distressing or anything on there. But I would distress the edges um, around the outside and um, around, you know, the other side, all around the edges. Um, some of them, when we do reassemble the envelopes, um, we'll need to distress some of these too. So I'm probably going to do about half of these. Um, I think that's all I need. And if we want to do more, I can always distress more later. But I figure I 
want some of my pages to have a tuck spot and some to be a pocket, um, an envelope pocket. So to do that, if I'm gonna leave them as a tuck spot, I don't need one of these. So I'm gonna probably do maybe every other page or something like that I thought would be nice. So I'll take about seven of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and those are the ones that I'll distress um, as well. So I'm gonna do all these envelopes and I'm going to do all of my little off cuts that I might be using and I'm just using, like I said, I'm using my frayed burlap distress ink here, and I'm just gonna go around and hit the edges. And because there is some white on the pages that I'm gonna be using for covering, I'm really not gonna be real um, precise about this. I just want there to be a little bit of distress around there to you know, keep that a hint of what was happening. And the other thing that I was going to mention is some of these pages, you know, we're going to be covering up this top part again when we put our envelopes back together. So you don't have to distress them all, but while I'm here, I might as well, you know, just go ahead and do it. So um, I think that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm also, for all of them, I do think I'm going to distress this little edge as well, um, right inside here because when we do cover some of this side, that little edge may stick out a little bit for us. So that is a full envelope um, distressed and ready to go. So I'm gonna do that with all of my envelopes. And then for the seven of these that I picked out, I'm just going to go around the all sides on one side. And then on the other side, I'm going to do everything but the flap again. So I'm gonna do the top edge, the little side edge here, this edge, and then inside here, inside the flap. So I'm not gonna worry about the flap part, um, but I am gonna do inside of there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do all of these and I will speed it up and cut it down so you don't have to watch this entire thing. <laughs> All right, I have everything distressed and I just wanted to go back and mention that I did end up distressing the outside flap. So not the inside, but the outside flap because it may show in parts of the pages when they fold over. So I just went back and did all that, um, all the flaps as well. So now we are ready to get started for our um, assembling. Okay. So what I wanna do first is I'm going to put these um, pieces that we cut off back on to some of my envelopes. So to do that, um, I'm going to, I'm gonna actually tear off or cut off, you could just snip these off, the flap. So all I have left is just the little pocket piece here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna reassemble these by just putting it on top of the envelope. So now you can see I kind of have my envelope, my full envelope back if I glue this on. So since I don't want it on all of them, obviously I'm not gonna do it on all of them, but for the seven or so that I have, I'm going to just take this and I'm gonna use my three-in-one glue here. And I'm just gonna be very careful because I don't wanna glue my envelope shut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bead of glue on this, let's see, on this top flap here, and then down the side to where the fold is. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the fold, um, I'm sorry, the edge down to the fold and just a little bit inside here. You don't have to worry about this being a, like a ton of coverage because with our papers on top and things like that, we'll have plenty of coverage for this. So now that it's um, all glued up, I'm gonna try and get this on here before I glue everything together, which would be my luck. So, and you wanna try to be sure you get it on there 
as um, straight against the bottom line as possible. And then on the top, just be sure that, you know, it's pretty straight across. Um, it may not be perfect since you're putting it over top of, you know, the other envelope here. And then just make sure that you don't have any glue that went inside to glue it together. So that's what we're gonna do with the seven of them. And as you can see, this is gonna be glued down, but now I have my full envelope back um, and it's all back together. So I'm gonna do that with these other seven. I'm just going to rip or snip off this piece of flap for all of them and then glue them onto the seven or so envelopes that I have um, that I have to put these on. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I have all of my pieces put back on my seven envelopes, and then I have my other envelopes that are, you know, just uh, like they were, open. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them in the order that I want them. So I'm going to take out, um, I think I'm going to take out one of the patched envelopes out for my cover. So the that's going to be my first one here and actually it goes this way so my covers there and then the rest I'm just going to organize the way that I want them so I'm going to put this aside and then probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, you know do one that's open and then one patched envelope kind of you know in that pattern just one after the other there um, just to keep some variety for each different page. And then looks like our last page, whoops, our last two pages are going to be open. Um, so that's fine, I think. Okay, so now to put everything together, we are going to start with our cover piece and you want the envelope opening to the right with the pocket on the left hand side. Then for each of the pages, we're going to do them, we're gonna put them in opposite. So I'm going to start, and actually, so since I put them together this way, they're gonna be a little bit backwards. I'm gonna have my two non-patched envelopes first, but that's okay. So I'm going to take an envelope that opens to the left with the pocket upside down, and I'm gonna put it into this envelope like this. Now I am going to do some gluing here, but I just kind of wanted to show you what I'm doing first so that you'll understand what I'm doing and I don't have glue drying up on me. 
So when I put that in like that, the flap is down and then I'm going to turn this page over and this is gonna be page number one. And then we're gonna do the same thing throughout each one. We're going to put this in here, just up to the crease, and then we're gonna fold it back. So you do wanna kinda of be sure that because the envelopes that are not um, patched back together, it's kind of hard to see where the seam is, you wanna be sure that you're putting your envelope in far enough that you're lining up your pages, but not too far and um, you know far enough. So you don't want them to be out too far that you know your pages don't line up when you put them in there, okay? So let me just kind of pull these out for a second. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this with no glue on it. We're gonna use this flap at the end, our cover flap. But each one that goes in, I'm going to put a little glue over top of where the adhesive might be. So my envelopes are, you know, self stick. You could just wet that and it would become wet, but I'm gonna use my glue stick instead because I don't feel like licking them all. And I'm just going to put one strip of glue right on that adhesive line and then very carefully put this in to my envelope and make sure that I have it in far enough. And to check it, I'm just going to fold this back and I can see this edge. I might wanna go in just a little bit further on the bottom edge if I can get it in. It hasn't dried yet. There we go. I think that's a little better. Okay. And then you can just, you know, press that flap down. Okay, so that's our first page. So, and then make sure you fold it over. So now our next page, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm going to put my glue on the flap there and we're gonna put the flap into this page. And I'm gonna make sure it's in far enough. You can see at the top, it's a little too far. So I'm gonna make sure I pull that out so that it's just in far enough to match the rest of my pages. Now, because this envelope has the fixed um, envelope, oops, it's getting a little sticky here. This one has my reconstructed envelope on it. So when I put this one, well, this one will be easy, but the next one, I'm just gonna have to shimmy it in. So I'm gonna once again, Put this in here, try and line it up and make sure I get this down far enough so that when it comes over, we're lining things up. Okay, so far so good. So now I have one of my reconstructed envelopes and I'll show you that one. So we're just gonna keep going putting glue on our flap and then I'm going to put this in here and it does make it um, tough with glue on there. You have to kind of work fast and shimmy things down in there before the glue, you know, gets to drying there. And then once again, once you get your flap in, make sure you turn your page over. So you're always putting the new envelope into the most recent envelope that you've already inserted into the journal there. So get glue all over the place. Let's do another one together. Got my glue on the flap and I'm just going to make sure this gets inserted far enough on both sides. Actually, I don't think that that's Press that down and flip that over. And we're just gonna keep going all the way through like that.
All right, now we have the whole thing put together. So this is our whole journal here. And um, I have the flap from our cover still kind of hanging out over here. So what I'm gonna do with that, because there's only 15 pages here, I'm gonna actually use that front flap to fold over and sort of become the spine for my journal. So to do that, I just kind of, you know, fold it over, kind of give it a little bit of a crease there. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my three-in-one glue and I'm gonna put it all along the actual spine here. Whoa, hello, as I try and get everything even. I'm just gonna put a little bit along the spine and on the flap, a little bit more, because I do want it to hold. And then on the spine, I'm just gonna kinda try to spread things out a little bit so that I have some good um, adhesion there. And then I'm just going to fold that flap over fairly tightly and push everything down so that this holds everything together. And then we'll let that dry and we will have the base for the journal ready to go. So that'll probably be dry pretty quickly. That uh, glue dries pretty fast. And so now I'm back on the cover page and you can see now I have my journal and I have my full pockets and I have my tuck spots that are all here and ready to go for me. So you can see I can flip all the way through it and I like this binding because it does um, give you a nice flat binding. So if you wanted to be writing in it, um, that works out pretty good. So there we go. That's the whole journal all put together. And now we can uh, do one of two things. So we can start to cover everything or we can do our cover. Um, at least we can start the cover. I don't want to finish the cover um, until probably until the end so that we have everything together. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start covering the pages. Now the front and the back we're going to leave blank because that's where we're going to use our lightweight cardboard. Um, so you don't need to put anything on the front and the back. But for the inside pages, there's a couple things we need to do. For the pages that are going to be left as um, tuck spots, I'm going to use my corner rounder to round off the corner at the top just to make it look um, a little bit nice and neater so it sort of matches this end. And then also, I don't know if your envelopes are like mine, they have this little, I don't know, cut in there that looks a little weird. I started to cut them off, but I think I'm just gonna let them go. Um, if you have something like that and you wanna trim them up and straighten them up, um, you can do that. And you'll have to pardon all the glue all over my hands. <laughs> so all I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna go through and for all my tuck spot pages, I'm just going to round those corners to make them look a little bit nicer. For my um, envelope pieces that are put back together, I don't need to do any of that because I have the envelope, the pocket ready to go there. So just for the pages that don't have anything on them, we're just gonna go through and give them a nice corner round throughout the whole journal. 